Hey, I'm Pip, this is Replay, and today I'm listening to Remy Wolf's album, Juno. I'm a big fan of Remy Wolf. I first kind of got into contact with her last year with her track Photo ID, and I've kind of been like a fan ever since. No one is putting out sounds so goofy, unique, and just kind of fruity and chaotic and a real kaleidoscope of color. And with this album, you do get kind of like a real look into her crazy mind. Also, when I found out about Remy Wolf last year, I did a little bit of digging into like who she was. She's really talented. She actually used to be a former Olympic skier as a kid. So she like went to the junior Olympics and competed as like a pro skier and then she got into music she was in like an acapella group as a kid and she went on American Idol she was like a gun songwriter for so many people including George Alice stuck in a bubble so yeah she's like a musical genius I'm obsessed with her so let's get into this album together first up let's take a listen to liquor store track number one already such like an abrasive beginning and it's just like Yep, we're going straight in. We're deep diving into Remy's brain with that really scratchy guitar. That's the trademark thing about Remy. She has those like really big saturated vocals that have like layers and layers and layers of harmonies. It's like a big mood for her. Straight to horny jail with this. Yeah, so you can already hear kind of what this song is about, like headaches on headaches on headaches and like having my marbles on the brink. You can definitely tell she's uh, talking about her struggle with alcohol. So this song is actually about like Remy's 2020 summer when she was in rehab for alcohol addiction. Like, so much flex on that vocal when she just, like, does these little trills. Oh, it just makes my heart sing. Like, it's just so fast. She's trying to get so much in there, and it's like the ooh, ooh, ooh. Like, it's just high energy, very pacey. Oh, just like that, dun, 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 like such an earworm, very catchy melody. You'll have it in your head for days. It's just got like Remy stamped all over it. Apart from that melody being so catchy, like I love that she makes this song sound really like whirly and dizzy. It's almost like you're under the influence while listening to this, like you're tipsy as well. Liquor store, a real bop. And we're gonna go straight into the next one. This is Anthony Kiedis. Already with the we use and like that real do wop energy obsessed everything shut down Drops in my family dynamics yeah, everything so whack. i really like that how she always plays with pitch and like tone and making herself sound like a little alien I'm doing on and off Pilates, like a middle-aged soccer mommy Okay, that lyric there, I'm obsessed with it. I'm doing on and off Pilates like a middle-aged soccer mummy. It's exactly what we were doing in COVID, which is kind of what she's talking about in this. Like, you know, trying to make space in the living room, putting down a yoga mat, feeling really cramped while your housemates are watching you do like really shitty like YouTube Pilates, trying to follow along. <laughs> Anytime an artist has like one of those big like na 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 like no lyrics just sound you know that shit's gonna go off live. This is like classic Remy Wolf. Like you think it's going one way and then she just switches it up straight away. Oh my God, that's like my favorite bit of this song. 
that like little clapping noises, it kind of reminds me of like maybe in primary school, like kids doing like hopscotch and then just having like the guillotine chop, like you can hear the guillotine come down and you can also hear this like really gross, like wet bloody noise afterwards. And I think that's very her because she's not afraid to just do gross shit and weird shit as well. I just love it. Like you can literally hear like thick, wet blood, like falling on the ground. It's so gross, but amazing. <laughs> Everything's so cloudy, yeah. And I don't have feelings. I feel my family dynamics like a red hot chili pepper. I love my family intrinsically like Anthony Kiedis. Obviously this song, Anthony Kiedis, Red Hot Chili Peppers, you got the reference. I didn't need to explain that. But yeah, she, uh, I think she wrote this song after reading his memoirs and just being like really inspired by him and talking about her relationships with her family and friends and stuff and obviously weaving in that COVID stuff. But yeah, this has got to be one of my favorites of the album. It's so upbeat, so fun. The na 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 chorus, you can't beat it. It's unbeatable. So good. All right, let's move on to the next track. This is track number three, WID or What You Doing. It already sounds like a bit of a video game to me, like a little 8-bit kind of sounding moment. Already like a bit of a different groove as well, kind of a bit more sexy. I like it. Hold on, that lyric. Let me get that up. Escargo, good blow and cordon blue. All these little bitches telling me what to do. Obviously this track is kind of about her reflecting on her time getting more famous and uh, people above her in the music industry potentially asking her to do more and more and more while they're kind of just like gorging on like the high life and like maybe reaping the rewards of her really hard work. Okay, so this lyric to me going from like I want water Swimming in Revelation to then like, I want fire, I'm getting down with a fever dream and then like, back to, oh no, I want water. I think to me, this kind of sounds like, yeah, she's like chasing that fire, which is like the passion and like the hard work and just like all the excitement of being a musician. But then like, potentially girl bossing a little bit close to the sun and actually catching fire and being like, oh shit, someone like put me out. I need water. I'm parched. I'm dry. I'm thirsty. Like I'm on fire. Help. Um, that's kind of how I interpret that, but I don't know, I guess it's up to interpretation. Yeah, so she's doing like a little rap here, talking about how she doesn't need any validation from anybody. She doesn't need her name in your mouth, she can do it herself. I don't need your validation I got Are you kidding? Like her in the background, just like belting the, I'm not going to try, but you heard it. Coming back with that kind of like trademark stuff of Remy where she has like a big solo moment at the end with the kind of synthy electric guitar. It's so good. And still, like, obviously the lyrics is something that you should pay attention to with her because she's so good at writing stories and describing her experiences in such a fun, witty way. Super cool. Love it. This next track is Gorilla. Okay. Okay, so already I feel like this is kind of like a rap song beat compared to her other ones. Yeah, so this song is about her, like, well, not her, but like being at like these LA parties and like wanting to connect with people. So this is like shout out to anyone who goes to a party and is sticking around the food table or patting the party like person's dog or cat and you know, wanting to connect with someone, but also just being like, oh, this is like stressful and not a great time for me. <laughs> good, tie, 
I love how she slows down the chorus and just kind of gets back into that like, sexy groove again. And we're back at full force. It's like from like zero to a hundred so quickly. Again, she's so unpredictable in the way that she like interprets sound and goes places that you didn't expect. Going from like real sexy to slow and then like bam, like wall of sound. I don't know if you can hear that, but like the guys in the background, the rap guys being like, oh, 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 I love that. What? Okay, now we're going crazy again. Oh my God. I love the ending of that song. Cool, let's go to the next track. This is quite on set. And like a nice big rap beat. Um, this is one of her like big singles as well. So no doubt you've probably heard this before. Big fan. Wait. <laughs> you can't go past any lyric where someone references human centipede. I ain't got no time for frenemies eating my ass like a human centipede. That is a big diss vibe. And I love that people have just taken this horrible movie and made so much content out of it. I mean, she's not the first one to quote Human Centipede in a song. I think um, Childish Gambino did as well. Again, on the sex thing, what's better than two girls, two cups? <laughs> Don't look that up. Let's keep going. That whole bit where she goes on a tangent about like ordering food, like Chuck E. Cheese, I just think that lends to the vibe that Remy puts out, which is very like ADHD, like her focus is just pulled in like so many directions, you kind of don't know what is going on. But I'm here for the chaos. <laughs> Okay, we gotta stop on that lyric. Orgy at five guys with five guys, that's 10 guys and holy Christ, I've never seen more nuts in my life. An iconic lyric, I don't need to say more. It's when she puts her baby voice on and she's doing this whole little monologue about getting like lost as a kid. And I just want you to picture while you listen to this, because it really reminds me of that little kid who went super viral as a meme like years ago and he's talking about a dream and he can't put a whole sentence out for the life of him. It takes him like three minutes to get one sentence out and he's like, could you ever, have you ever had a dream where you thought you could, you would, you thought... Have you ever had a dream that, that you, um, you had, you... You you could you do you you want you you can do so you you do you could you you want you want him to do you so much you could do anything. That's who I'm talking about. That little kid. I I, I, I wasn't. I, I didn't do anything wrong. Imagine her in the studio just doing that. I bet you it was just like this mad ad lib moment. The producer's just like, yeah, let's do it. Let's put it on the album. <laughs> I'm so glad she did though, because it's just such a weird insight into her like crazy kaleidoscope of a wormhole brain. Like she's insane. I love it. Okay, so that obviously, quite on set, an iconic song. It's because no one's doing what she's doing right now. No one sounds like her. It's just like totally unique, insane, and people are frothing it, and I am too. Let's do the next song. This is Volcano. Already it's like, okay, little bossa nova moment, little strummy. Volcano, 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 Volcano. 
back with like the really fat like synthy sounds and also just her vocal on this it's so powerful so clear and she can just sing it's amazing also i would love to know what volcano is i actually don't know what does dunking bread on italian lace mean who knows but i'm all in i love her lyrics so much sometimes they don't make sense but i'm here for it Hold on, she sounds so much like SZA here. I actually love that. Like that to me. And this... Those really dark synths like underneath her there so reminds me of like The Weeknd, how he does like a bit of like a darker breakdown. And yeah, oh my God, those SZA kind of vocals. They sound amazing. Out of my head, I get out. Just those little, like, little production details that you really have to listen out for, like those sirens in the background to like add to that kind of dark atmosphere in this. So cool. Big fan of Volcano as it fades out there. Look, it's really cool. Like it's such a different song from her. Again, like I do really think that it is probably like the most pop from her, but I really like it. And yeah, bringing in those like darker elements at the end is really, really cool. This is Front Tooth. Yeah, again, those little bells and whistles that she puts in the production, like the glass breaking, like really sets up the song. I saw peanut butter wolf at the show. I saw Ness grow. Getting a taste for the relevant. Running around town in the know. Boys, men, most high five drives. Bumping my best friend shit. Straight away, I feel like I noticed that the drums are really different on this. They're kind of like really tight and like in a different place that you'd think. Yeah, this still feels like a Conor McGregor fight. Kick it out my front tooth. This still feels like a Conor McGregor fight kicking out my front tooth. I love all the name drops in this album. She's obviously such a big pop culture nerd and just puts so many different little references in. It's really fun. The bed I sleep in, you're a garden home. You're a fire hose. Yeah, you're out of control. You're my dolphin lover. So somebody please riddle me why this. You're the air I need. You're the love I breathe. You're my dolphin lover with a little dolphin noise. So somebody please riddle me why this still don't qu feel quite right. Yeah, it sounds like she's really struggling to like have this relationship make it work with this person because they're like constantly fighting, but they still really love each other. And it's like that niggling feeling of just like, uh, this isn't what it's supposed to be like, even though you are so great. Wake my body up, wake my body up. Woo! The way she sings that, you can hear just a tiny bit of rasp in that tone and you can tell there's like a bit of pain there. Another classic end to a classic Remy Wolf song, ending with that big, fat, screechy, raspy solo there. Let's keep going. This is Grumpy Old Man. Hey, it's okay. Look over the fence. There's things over there that I know you don't know about yet. Okay, already like a bit of a weird vibe going on with the bongos and like the pitched voice. I'm so defensive, I got bongos thumping in my chest and something tells me they don't be for me. Just constantly being like, I'm so defensive, line, line, line. I'm like, yes, mood. I'm a defensive person as well. This song is singing to me. That's such a great line. I'm so defensive. I got eggshells on my doorstep and I don't give second chances easily. I think that's so great. Whiskey in the shower, very old man thing to do. Uh, 
Oh, I have to pause it there just because of that like Bo Diddley reference in there about the diamond. How does she just so effortlessly pull this reference in and put it in like it's like no big deal? And with like the little it's just so much fun. I love that. Long hair, long beard, turtleneck, sweater, you got short. And like her going into like a really southern accent, like really drawing out that. It's just so great. I love it. Ending on that really weird note again with the pitched voices. It's talking about my friend Sting, something about like a galactic journey. Singing that chorus like the long hair, long beard, turtleneck sweater. It's just such an earworm. And the way she runs the words together is it makes it really, really fun to sing. This is Buttermilk. Buttermilk, buttermilk, buttermilk. One second we get then it's overkill. You're pulling me out of the gutter, then throwing me into the lava. There's already something really different about it, like because it just goes straight in with her vocals and that Could be because I've been listening to a little bit of Kanye recently, but like I really love that like rolling jungly kind of drum. You know how he loves like a big drum moment like that. I think he would appreciate this. Something about these lyrics here, like you're pulling me out of the gutter, then throwing me into the lava, dunking me into the water, hot potato pain. I don't know about you, but maybe I feel like this is Remy almost like picturing herself like a potato boiling in lava and then getting thrown into like a pot of water. It's something that I think that she does quite a lot, like making that kind of like surrealist, absurd lyric that you're just like, I'm not really sure what this is, but it's definitely painting a really vivid image in my mind. <laughs> Whoa, okay, so the ending of that is really, really cool. You definitely heard like all the like screaming and the distortion and stuff. And I think that kind of really adds to the texture and the notion that she's just getting like thrown between like water and lava and she's just like, ah, I'm dying or, or something. Let's go to the next track. This is Sally. Already you can kind of tell it's a little bit like more pensive potentially, like not as happy sounding. Yeah, there's like oh, definitely a lot of emotion in her voice here. And again, I might use that scissor reference, but also like maybe a little bit of like Rihanna on like the Anti album when she's doing those like really like big ballady songs. Yes, I love that in this song, there's that auto-tune moment as well. Like I love it when artists like treat their vocals with a bit of auto-tune, especially with Remy. It's like, you know, the girl can sing. There's something really nostalgic as well about this melody with the way that that guitar comes in. Is this like the first, the first potentially sad song of the album that we're hearing? I feel like it is. I love Remy so much. Just when you thought you're like, cool, I know this is going. No, she's like putting in a huge drum machine moment. It's getting really distorted and cool. Yeah. It just like hits you right in the chest there, like that lyric, I don't want to waste another night. There is a sense of urgency. She just wants to like find this person and, and love them. And like this lyric as well, I've been waiting so long just to try and tell you that lately all my songs are about you. Oh. That song is so different, Sally. Like there's 
definitely like a kind of like an alt pop thing going on with those guitars. It's like a bit more twangy and those really big like crashing cymbals and that bass line. I could, like I'm obsessed with her. Like the fact that she does that full breakdown with like really distorted drum machine bits. It's so creative and potentially that track actually Sally I think might be like the most wild journey within like a song. Next track is Sexy Villain. This is one of my favorites. Uh, there's just already like so much sexy groove on that like you are just ready to grind so much to unpack with this chorus already the way that her vocals are just like breathy and angelic when she's singing sexy villain and then she goes down to that like really low kind of monotone when she's like not the hero i'm the west coast bob de niro that's all like one note and that contrast between that i'm obsessed it's so cool long as he don't check the freezer and then she's like yum yum it's so good. Comparing those two lines, like she's obviously talking about her being a villain. I could only assume that she means there's a dead body in the freezer. And then she does this like cute little innocent like yum 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 afterwards. <laughs> Super emo aqua girl with the rising Leo. I'm not into star signs, so I don't really know what that means, but um, it must mean that she's evil in some way. <laughs> Anyone in that bit could have just done a normal like doo 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 or like wah 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 noise, but she's saying tippy tippy toe, tippy tippy toe, which I just think is like, oh, genius. Like you are like adding to this whole visual of someone being evil. They're like sneaking around. It's just great. <laughs> She fucking loves a, like a synthy guitar solo at the end there, doesn't she? <laughs> ah, such a good song. Sexy Villain, easily one of my favorites. This is the second last song called Buzz Me In. Yeah, already starting off like way less chaotic than every other track. Like wasted time, we can dance around it in lie, lie, lie. Uh, it's the breakup song for sure, you know, like my tears taste like you, like wasted time. Ooh, big oof. No time to be sad though, we're gonna get groovy. Gotta comment on the fact that like her vocal range is insane, like she can do those like really angelic airy ethereal vocals up here and then go like super low whenever she wants okay so i was wrong this isn't the breakup song this is just about her like being with this person and like constantly going to their door and seeing them but like they're kind of lying to her about who well maybe what the relationship is tell me pigs can fly say you'll always be mine say you ain't like the other guys yeah just sounds like somebody who uh is probably the same as every other dude. This is Street You Live On, and it's the final one for the Juno album. Just wanna say those big like, doo -doo 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 -doo, like Phil Collins 80s drums. Big fan. It already sounds so different to everything. I mean, she's still got like that really treated, like distorted vocal on there that almost doesn't even sound like her. Um, but yeah, this song definitely feels like the wind up, like the end of the movie, like the depression kind of seeping in. There's something um, a little bit sadder about this one. Oh, that lyric, I'm a paper map rerouting different ways to the store because they're trying to avoid this person. Oh my God. Super relatable, I hate it when that happens. 
This is the breakup song, like, yeah, avoiding that street, like rerouting the way that you're getting to your normal places because you don't want to see that person because you're going to get that really sick feeling in your tummy if you, like, pass them on the street. Ugh. Yeah, if you heard that, it's kind of hard to get that out there in the lyrics. Uh, she's saying, I'm a serial farmer. I'm harvesting the drama. This episode of Criminal Minds is too real to ignore. That is just her, I think, saying she's going back to this person and she's kind of like low-key stalking them a little bit, harvesting that drama and like obviously referencing Criminal Minds, you know, being like, okay, I'm being a little bit too creepy. This feels like a real episode now for me, like stalking this person. Oh. I mean, honestly, that could just fade out forever. Kind of like an emotional song, but like only if you really like try and listen to those lyrics. The instrumental of that is still really, really cool and it has so much heart as well. Probably some of my favorite tracks have got to be Anthony Kiedis. There's so many great references and you cannot go past like the big like na-na-na moments, like that big chorus. I also really surprisingly have gotten into Volcano as well. I just think that song really does pop so hard. Yeah, that breakdown at the end is really, really cool. Sally, I think just in a sense, like in that whole like journey within that song, because so much stuff happens, I think that's like a really fun, interesting track. Um, and of course, Sexy Villain. Ugh, I just, I'm obsessed with that song. It is, it does what it says it does on the label. It's sexy and it's villainous. Some final thoughts about this album, I would say. It's such a wall of sound. It's so fruity, it's so chaotic. It's so loud and colorful that if you're not like ready to just like have fun with it, um, don't listen to it. Like this isn't like a sad mood album. This is definitely like a really fun, going to a summer festival, um, kind of getting hyped at the like pre's before you go out kind of album. Obviously there are like a few more vulnerable songs in there and that's really, really cool because it kind of gives you a little break from the craziness that is Juno. But yeah, it's definitely just a really, really joyful, manic anxiety attack in a sonic form, but like in a good way. I just think that Remy Wolf is kind of low-key a musical genius. She has so many tricks up her sleeve and I kind of can't wait to see what she does next.